How's it going, everybody? Welcome to today's video. To start this video off right, I want you all to comment below, who do you think the best American League baseball team is right now? Comment below. Welcome back to the Daily Baseball Report. I'm Coach Matt, where all we do is talk baseball and baseball-related news. We are on our way to 1K by opening day, so please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I will be very, very grateful for it. Now that you have all commented your favorite American League baseball team, I'm sorry, the best American League baseball team right now, let's have a discussion about it. Because Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox claims that they are the best team in the American League. Now, I don't know about you, but they're definitely better than they were last year. There's no denying. They are better. They have a Jose Abreu, Tim Anderson, Yasmani Grandal, Lance Lance, like Giolito. They've got, they've got some pieces there. They absolutely do. But are they better than the Yankees? And are they better than the Toronto Blue Jays? That, that, that is the hard question to answer because I feel like the Blue Jays are better than the White Sox and I feel like the Yankees are better than the Toronto Blue Jays. So, what do you all think? Speaking of the New York Yankees, and it's kind of ironic that I think the Yankees are better than the White Sox, and here is the score for the Yankees today. They lost 15-0. to zero. No one has said that the Phillies wouldn't be able to hit. We all knew that, that they would be able to hit the ball. They have de definitely have pieces in place to have a very potent offense. Their issue is pitching, and they kept the New York Yankees to zero runs. Staying in the same city, the New York Mets had three home runs, one of them was by Pete Alonso, and it was a blast. This guy hit this ball a long way, and it just sounds good off the bat. Brandon Nimmo and Hager both had the other two home runs. Now, how do any New York Mets fans feel about Patances? Dylan Patances was with the Yankees for how many years? I think it was like seven seasons or so, something like that. And he's got like a, a career ERA in the threes, which is pretty decent, but he also was playing for the New York Yankees, and they've been pretty competitive the last decade or so. And right now, he's uh, not doing all that great. What do, what do you Mets fans think? Comment below. I'd love to discuss the Dylan Patances signing. Ryan Zimmerman had a double and a home run in the same game against the Mets. Victor Robles was 0 for 2, but had two stolen bases, and he's hitting 167. I thought Victor Robles was going to have a little bit better of a spring, but so far his spring has been a little bit abysmal, but he's stealing bases, so at least he's contributing in some way to the Nationals' offense. I know for a fact he's going to get going, and they're going to he's going to be hitting his normal you know, 275. Regardless, it's just interesting to see that this guy was hitting laser beams a week ago, but he's only got a 167 batting average to show. I wanted to bring up that Joey Gallo hit another home run. An absolute blast. Is it time to panic if you are a Los Angeles Angels fan? Because Joe Adele is 0 for 6. And he's hitting 0. And let me, let me say it again. He's hitting 0 in spring training. You'd think at some point he would get a good pitch to hit and have actually have a hit. But he's 0 for 6. He does have a couple runs scored. I think it's 3 runs scored. But how do you feel about that? That he's literally 0 for 6. Also on the Angels, who surprisingly is hitting 0, is John Jay. Now, John Jay is getting a little bit older. He's, I think, 35. But he's 0 for 7. He's a seasoned veteran. This guy used to be a pretty feared hitter when he was with the St. Louis Cardinals. But he's 0 for 7, hitting 0. Is that what the Anaheim Angels, I'm sorry, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Is that what they expected when they signed this guy? Comment below. I would love to talk about it. Kyle Seeger hit a home run for the Seattle Mariners yesterday. And I think the big question that everyone is thinking in their minds, and I will voice it, 
is will he be in a Seattle uniform at the trade deadline or beyond? I personally think he's going to be traded and it'll be to a contending team or a fringe, uh, fringe team. You know, maybe someone like the, you know, maybe even the Phillies or the Nationals or maybe the Twins. Like a team that uh, is going to unload a couple of prospects because we all know the Seattle Mariners, they are all about their prospects and keeping them in the minor leagues. <laughs> that was a good ex-GM joke, but is that too soon? Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> the Chicago Cubs hit three home runs and routed the Dodgers seven to nothing yesterday. What we learned in that game was Edwin Yusida, who is a prospect that the Dodgers signed two years ago, has a really good changeup, one that rivals Pedro Baez, but he can't locate any other pitch. So... There's that. And I'm going to look at this from a strength and conditioning coach's lens for a moment. So we're going to pull up Edwin's stats. He is six feet. He's 23 years old. And the big factor that I see is that he weighs 155 pounds. 155 pounds at six foot and 23 years old. He is a skinny, skinny, skinny guy. So as a strength and conditioning coach, my first thought is get this guy a damn pizza. Get this guy some food. I want to compare him to another pitcher on the Dodgers who is also six foot, but he's left-handed for both throw and hit. He's 25 years old and he was a postseason hero. Well, I won't give him a hero, but he was a very effective postseason pitcher at Victor Gonzalez. And he weighs 180 pounds. So there is a large gap between 180 and 155. So as a strength and conditioning coach, my first thought is this man needs to get on a big time strength and conditioning plan. The guy needs to put on a lot of weight and he needs to eat. So... You see, that didn't have that great of an outing. He couldn't locate his fastball and his changeup is lights out, but the guy has some room to grow. I think he was only in the game to, to, to be given some looks because there wasn't a, a minor league season last year, which is understandable that he was a little bit erratic in his, in his pitch location. The Houston Astros beat the St. Louis Cardinals 14 to zero. 14 to 0. Now, it's spring training. I understand that there's going to be some lopsided games, but this is what is what blows my mind. There was only two doubles and one home run, which meant that the C <laughs> which means the Houston Astros singled their way to 14 runs. They just single after single after single after single after single after single. After single and beat the St. Louis Cardinals 14-0. If I were a fan of that game, I would have wanted my money back. That is a lame way to lose 14-0. At least have five or six home runs, or a whole bunch of doubles, or a, a Little League home run, you know, someone running around the entire, like something, something exciting. But single after single after single after single, my goodness, I would have been like, give, 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 let me pitch, I'll get these guys out. Like, goodness. And here I am wearing the Chicago White Sox fan appreciation hat. I got to go on my birthday in 2015. It's a good time. And they're giving away these, these hats. Uh, pretty cool uh, that I always get a hat in every stadium I go to. So that day I actually got two hats. Uh, and I'm wearing the hat because of Tim Anderson. He claims that the White Sox are the best team in the American League. And I do not think so. But I will support you, Tim. I believe in you, but I do not think you are better than the Toronto Blue Jays or the New York Yankees. And it's that time of year where everyone should believe that their team is the best team. It's spring training. And back it up by winning games in the postseason. And that will do it for today's video. Thanks for sticking around and listening to your, your fifth day of spring training games of the 2021 season. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, 
and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, we will see you tomorrow.